Middleton and Schroll, uh, where I'm a partner, is an international trade law firm. Um, so we're focused exclusively on helping companies uh, navigate legal and compliance issues uh, in importing and exporting products into and out of the U.S. Um, and uh, client size usually ranges from small to medium startups who are looking at their first trade venture to well-established Fortune 500 multinationals who are looking more to refine their compliance processes or address you know, a specific legal issue. About 45 days ago, uh, he really escalated the, the China trade war rhetoric. Um, he laid down uh, what we refer to as Section 232 penalties. Those are the aluminum and steel tariffs that he, he, he brought forward um, about a month and a half ago. Uh, and those are, those are not China specific, but they really are uh, indirectly targeted at China, being, being large producers of steel and aluminum. Right. Uh, and then on the heel of that, they, they filed what is uh, called a Section 301 um, trade action. They conducted an, an investigation, determined that China is um, utilizing technology transfer techniques to sort of usurp a lot of American IP. Uh, and, and leverage that into about $50 billion worth of tariffs, proposed tariffs, uh, on Chinese imports. Um, China immediately retaliated and said they'd do the same, uh, levying tariffs on not just American products, but American products that are core to Trump's base, think soybeans and other agricultural products. Um, <laughs> Trump then said um, they'd look at potentially another $100 billion worth of tariffs um, based on the retaliation. Um, so there's been a lot of tit for tat. It has been escalating. The markets have been terrified. Uh, a lot of my clients have been terrified. Um, we've been pouring through a list of over 1,300 products that are up to up for proposed tariffs. Um, but then there was, there was a little bit of, of cooling last night. Um, China's premier seemed to indicate that he would be open to relaxing the markets more. So we'll see. The status quo isn't working, and it has not been working clearly. Um, and I think people on both sides of the debate will admit that it's not working. Why not try something new? Um, and, and it works for him in other areas of the law. Why not try it in the trade space? Um, and I think there is a valid argument to say these, these economies, the, these developing economies, um, tend to operate on more of a confrontational model anyways. So why not? Or ruthless. Or, yeah, or why not play more in that space? And you're right, to, 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 based on what we've seen from China in the last 24 hours, it's possible um, that Trump is right and that uh, the retaliatory tariffs are a bluff and that in the end they will essentially, in order to have access to the U.S. market, relent in their IP usurpation wow. and, and not retaliate fully. The trade, the trade balance indicates that we need them probably a bit more than they need us on a purely trade basis. So what they do need, to your point though, is the technology. They are incapable of developing the technology at a sufficient rate to maintain their growth and have relied on in the past um, transitioning American technology as a requirement for doing business in China.